In this tutorial, we'll develop a basic C Sharp application and discuss variables in C Sharp. Welcome to Gavinlon Digital. Hi everyone, my name is Lon. Okay, before we launch into writing code, please subscribe to be notified of future content and please hit the bell icon if you are already subscribed. This is the third part of the C Sharp for Beginners course. Please see in the description below a link to the second part of the C Sharp for Beginners course, which contains content about C Sharp data types. Also, please find in the description below information on how you can download and install Visual Studio for Windows or Mac and the .NET Core SDK free of charge. Details of my GitHub repository are also in the description where you can download the code created in this tutorial as well as relevant documentation. What are variables? Variables are simply names and code that represent a storage location in memory where data is stored. This data stored for a particular variable can be changed. Each variable in c -sharp needs to have a specific type, which determines the size and layout of the variable's memory. For example, a variable can be defined as type int, which means that it will be used to store a 32-bit integer value. The int32 data type can store a range of values from between minus 2,147,483,648 and 2,147,483,647. The magnitude of this range is determined by the number of bits used to represent value in memory. The int32 data type constrains a variable defined with the int keyword to 32 bits of data for the representation of value in memory. Based on the data type, specific operations can be carried out on the variable. For example, the plus operator applied between two variables defined as the int data type has a completely different meaning to when the plus operator is applied between two variables defined as the string data type. So the type with which a variable is defined gives the operation a context. The expression involving the two integer variables will result in a mathematical operation i.e. the addition of the two values stored for the two variables. A concatenation operation, which is simply the joining of more than one string from end to end, will result when the plus operator is applied between two string variables. The number of bits related to a particular data type exponentially affects the magnitude and range of values that can be stored in an integer. For example, the byte data type is an integer data type that can support 8 bits of data. It is an unsigned data type which means it can only support positive values. A signed data type, like the N32 data type, can support both positive and negative values. Let's update our C-sharp data type hierarchy representation that we created in the previous part of this course, C-sharp data types, with signed and unsigned counterparts for our integer data types. This hierarchy is part of a PDF document associated with this tutorial. Details of where you can download this document is in the description below under the GitHub Documents section. So, if we wanted to use the byte data type to store the student ID, this limits us to a range of 0 to 255 whole numbers. So let's assign 255 as the student ID. There's no problem with this because the byte data type can store a range of whole numbers from 0 to 255. What happens if we assign 256 to our byte variable? This value exceeds the capacity allowed for the byte data type. What happens if we change the byte data type to a short integer data type and assign 256 to the short integer variable? Well, this is acceptable because the data type supports 16 bits of data, which means it supports whole number values between minus 32,768 to 32,767. But what if we assign a value of 32,768 to our short integer variable? We get an error because this value exceeds the capacity supported by the short integer data type. So let's define the variable as n32. The n32 data type supports a range of integer values between minus 2,147,483,648 and minus 32,767. So as you can see, the value 32,768 clearly falls within the supported range. So I'm going to create a custom class used to store data related to a student record. I'm first going to define private member variables for the class. The fact that these variables are private means that they can only be accessed from within the class in which they are defined. The scope of these variables is limited to the class 
In other words, these values cannot be directly accessed from outside the class in which they are defined, but can be accessed from anywhere within the student class. The variables I'm defining are of the following types. I'll define these variables and give a brief explanation as a recap of what was discussed in the c -sharp Data Types tutorial. These are all inbuilt data types, which simply means data types provided in the c -sharp language. The student class is a user-defined type and is a collection of related types and methods. Classes will be discussed in more detail in an upcoming tutorial. StewID is defined as an integer. An integer is a 32-bit data type. It is a signed data type, which means it supports both negative and positive values. This data type supports a range from minus 2 billion, 147 million, 483,648 to 2,147,483,647. The integer data type has an unsigned counterpart integer data type named uint. Unsigned means it only supports positive values. uint supports a range of positive whole number values from between 0 to 4,294,967,295. An integer is a value type. String. Internally, a string is stored as a read-only sequence of char objects. A string is immutable. A string is a reference type. Decimal. A decimal is a precise fractional or integral type that can represent decimal numbers with 29 significant digits. It differs from the float and the double data types because it supports less range but a much higher precision which makes the data type preferable for financial and monetary calculations. The float and double are faster than the decimal. Note the float keyword is an alias for the single type in c -sharp. The float, or single data type, supports 32 bits of data. The double data type supports double this amount of bits, i.e. 64 bits of data. The decimal supports 128 bits of data. The decimal data type is a value type. Char. The char is a 16-bit Unicode data type. It supports character encodings, i.e. values that represent characters. Unicode is a computer industry standard for the consistent representation of text for most of the world's writing systems. Unicode can be implemented by different character encodings. A char is a value type. We'll initialize our char-defined variable to a null character. Boolean. A Boolean data type supports one of two values, true or false. This data type supports 8 bits of data. The Boolean data type is a value type. This table contains details of C-sharp data types, a link to the PDF file that contains this table can be found in the description below under the Gavinlon Digital GitHub Repositories Documents section. C-sharp is case-sensitive, so the following two variables are deemed as different variables in C-sharp. In a language like Visual Basic, which is not case-sensitive, this would flag an error because as far as the VB compiler is concerned, this is one variable defined twice. You can't define a variable that begins with a numeric value or begins with any Unicode character that isn't alphabetical. The one exception to this is the underscore character. I like to use the underscore to define private member variables for classes. This is effective in distinguishing at a glance between, for example, local variables for methods and constructors and private member variables of the class in which they reside. You can include numeric values within your variable names as long as they do not appear at the beginning of the variable name. My advice for naming variables is keep them concise and descriptive. It is recommended that local method variables and member variables should use camel case, which means each distinct word in a variable name begins with an uppercase character except the distinct word that appears at the beginning of the variable name, which will contain a lowercase character at the beginning of the word. For property method class and struct identifiers, for example, Pascal case is recommended. This means that all distinct words in the identifier must have the first character in uppercase for all of the distinct words. Hungarian notation should be avoided in defining variables. This simply means, for example, the first name variable using Hungarian notation could contain the prefix str, denoting the data type with which the variable is defined, the string data type. So camel case is recommended for defining local variables for methods and private member variables for classes. 
Constructors have the same name as the class and they usually initialize the data members of the new object instantiated from the class at runtime. Let's create a method that is responsible for returning relevant data from the class as text. I'll also define a method for updating the loan amount. This method will be used for demonstrating the fundamental difference between value types and reference types. OK, let's develop the student application. This application will simply accept input from the user, which will be stored in an object created from the student class. I'll then initialize a new student object called student copy to the student object that stores the student data. I'll then use the update loan amount method to update just the student object with a new loan amount. We'll then see if this action has affected the student copy object. To save time, let's fast forward the creation of the code for this application. Details of where you can download this code is in the GitHub code section below in the description. OK, you can see here the student object is initialized with the user's input, which is passed into the constructor of the student class when creating the object from the class using the new keyword. We are then creating a new object called student copy and initializing this object with the object data stored in the student object. We are then outputting the relevant student data, including the loan amount data, to the screen for both the student and the student copy objects. We are then using the update loan amount method to update the student object's loan amount data. After this update, we are once again outputting the relevant student data, including the loan amount, to the screen. Let's test this. Bear in mind we are only updating the student object's loan amount data. We have only initialized the student copy data to the data stored in the student object. After this initialization, we have not updated any data for the student copy object. And you can see that updating the student object's loan amount data has also resulted in the same change to the loan amount data stored for the student copy object. This is because a class is a reference type. Both variables student and student copy point to the same data in memory. So if you update data for one of these objects, this update will reflect in the other object. Let's highlight the fundamental difference between value types and reference types with an example using the decimal value type. We have two variables, loan amount and loan amount copy, defined as the decimal data type, which as discussed is a value type. The user will enter data that will be stored in the loan amount variable. The loan amount copy variable will be initialized to the value stored in the loan amount variable. We'll output these two values to the console screen side by side. We'll then add 600 to the loan amount variable. We'll then once again output the values contained in these two variables to the console screen side by side. Let's demonstrate this. OK, first you can see the values are the same for both variables. The code then added 600 to the loan amount variable. As you can see, that after 600 was added to the loan amount variable, only the value stored in the loan amount variable is affected. The loan amount copy variable has not been changed. This is because the decimal data type is a value type. Value types store their own copy of data assigned to them. Reference types store a pointer to the actual data that is stored in a different location in memory. Value types store their data in a memory location called the stack. Reference types store a pointer on the stack to data that is stored in a memory location known as the heap. Please view the second part of this course, c -sharp Data Types, for a more in-depth explanation of how value types and reference types are managed in memory. We demonstrated how the context of operators are affected when applied to variables defined as different data types. We demonstrated how the number of bits supported for these value types affects the magnitude of the range of variables defined as these data types. We briefly discussed the difference between signed and unsigned integer defined variables. We briefly discussed rules and conventions associated with C sharp variable names. We created a user defined type for storing student data. We defined member variables for the student class, which were defined as int, string, decimal, char, and bool, respectively. We briefly discussed how the scope of variables limits or enhances access to the values stored within those variables. 
We created a basic application named student application to demonstrate the use of variables defined as both inbuilt data types and also a user-defined type. We then demonstrated a fundamental difference between value types and reference types. Please see the description below for details regarding any supplementary information associated with this tutorial. Please hit the thumbs up icon if you feel you have gained value from viewing this tutorial. And please subscribe. If you have already subscribed, please hit the bell icon to be notified of future content which will be coming soon. I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.